So I've been pondering so much about what is the deal with resurrection slash reincarnation slash after death, whatever. Um, slash asking and like praying that. And over and over again, what I get is a demonstration of how memory works and like how my memory works with the elements that make me up. So I guess there's a certain parallel between those two. And I think there is memory always comes back a little bit different and like in different contexts and almost in different forms, but it's fundamentally the same thread that like gets pulled through. I mean, especially with, I guess, gaining, well, well, you see this with like gaining knowledge in a new subject, remembering in different contexts, but also the word. Well, I think a lot about, I don't even know where this came from, but like that memory of body. Um, so the word remembering, you know, you have like the, well, in early modern English, which I'm familiar with because of the KJV, but the members of a body, like the, what would we call them these days? Just parts, I guess, of a body. Um, so when you remember something, you're giving, so I guess, spirit of that thing, like a new body, you're remembering it and continuing to bring it back into the body and give it a new body or continuing to give it body. So there is in that both memory and resurrection have that interplay between spirit and matter of remembering. And I guess if you think about ritual memory, like say the Eucharist or any religious ritual, it's an action that is reenacting and remembering um, a single event that happened a long time ago, but it's bringing that and making it present again with different materials and in different circumstances, but re-embodying that same pattern and therefore remembering and therefore also resurrecting and reviving and continuing to make present and real and alive said event and also this like power of it and the pattern. But my memory is pretty good. I think part of this is just this is just like the way that I excuse me think and I guess especially as I'm very like a writer. Part of me does not want to identify myself as a writer. I don't know why. I don't know what I am. Hmm. Maybe I'm just too familiar with that community, so I'm trying to like diversify a little bit lately, but I think it's very natural to me to think in terms of, of writing and narrative and story, or more poetry. But yeah, um, and like I always keep very detailed diaries and such. So I guess this, this is a natural way for this truth to be put to me, because I'm always thinking about like my memories and how they tie into the present and the structure and narrative of my past and like not wanting to draw any threads, but in truly I don't, like, drop any of those threads. Like, it's a thing of, I guess, that first revelation, not leaving your first love. And then a phrase that I say a lot is, if it's true, slash if it's real, it'll come back better and, it'll, and more itself. And within my internal world, that has proven true in ways beyond what I would have expected, um, that every like thread of interest that I've been interested in, every sort of stage of my life, all the places I've lived, all of the worlds of people that I've been in, and like the relationships that I've had during those times, and you know the particular feeling of that place when you like hear some music from a certain stage of your life, you're like, oh. Um, it just brings you back, or brings that forward. Um, all of those threads continually 
continue to like be revived and to be tied in to me and to make my story and continue to come up in me very clearly as if they were immediately present. Um, and it's not like I like grow out of those stages and then just leave them behind forever. But they are revived. I guess I think about like to give a few examples. My childhood imaginary friend, she had a certain form when I was like seven and I like made her up and then I changed her, like changed form a little bit, maybe, well, a few months after that and sort of settled into a certain design for her. Then she, um, during when I was like very concentrated in Christianity, I figured that that was like just a part of me and my imagination and to be sort of shunned, so I would very rarely like talk to her or whatever. And then now I can see, I like have another place for her, not as my imaginary friend who follows me around all the time. Um, but like, uh, I don't know how else to put it other than that there's a place in me and a certain like pattern and she is still in me, even though like in a fuller way. And, or like Tokipona. Tokipona is that I was really interested in it at first, and then I kept like trying to, trying to get rid of it, or like I would get guilty about it, and then it would just come back up and back up and back up. And now I'll just still like go through like spurts of, of interest in it and deepening the words and the meaning of the words and deepening my concept of, cause, yeah. So it's like the spirit and also the matter of this language continues to, at intervals, be resurrected or be remembered more intensely and every time in a deeper and like fuller way or similarly with the other languages that I know, especially Italian, I just really go on and off with that one. or personification and like fairies I used to be really interested in and I would read those books and I would write stories in that style and then again it sort of went underground it would go underground by their interest or also just by me saying that it was all bad because of Christianity um, and then now like the whole concept of the enchanted world and like a re-enchanted world and a cosmos that is living and of like I guess, in a sense, angels or spirits. But anyway, there is like that same idea and definitely that same thread that has fascinated me since my childhood, but in a much fuller and a much richer way. And as it is remembered, comes back more fully. Or like even the church and that sort of world that like I left and that I really don't fit in there anymore. And I've sort of outgrown that world I still, it's still a part of me and that and the people, especially and like at intervals, will just be so clear to me. Like the music I used to listen to and the nostalgia of that and just like everything from that stage. And we'll just come back very clearly and The perspective, of the perspective that I have now allows me to, I think, love that church and those people better even than when I was in it. Um, yeah, so just, if it's true and if it's real, it will come back better. And this has definitely been true with all of the elements of me or of my life, the stages of my life, the relationships, the interests, and things that have been a part of me they stay and it's not like a completely consistent like always exactly the same amount always but always coming back and always better more integrated and more deeply themselves and it's very satisfying to me personally that 
I see this pattern playing out because it satisfies my taste for not dropping any threads and for things being coherent and yeah. But given the connection between the mind and like the whole cosmos and between body and memory, I have to conclude that it's well it, I mean obviously, but I like can only partially see it. Uh, the same sort of pattern, the same sort of angel also applies in the case of like death death and the oblivion and the dissolving of or like the scattering of a person especially their body and it, I don't see it completely clearly but it's sort of I see very clearly what's going on with memory and I can extrapolate that it has to apply in the case of death, death as well. Um, Pierre Terre de Chardin says, and again, this is something that I'm like, okay, I guess I'll take his word on it. I don't entirely intuitively understand it, but he says that like, well, matter is falling into spirit, not falling, but like matter is rising and becoming transformed into spirit, and that at a certain point, this becomes irreversible, that things are not just going back to entropy, and that the primary movement in the universe is not in fact one toward entropy, but is one toward consolidation and toward life and toward matter becoming spirit, becoming integrated with spirit. And that this is irreversible, which is a nice thought. Again, irreversible not meaning like permanent in a dead sense. You know, meaning like a monument that's just there and then it it's like static, because that is really death. Like life involves change, which in a sense involves death and time. But it's like, integrated into her what's like really going on is life coming back better and more itself. Yeah, Re remembering. Oh, and another aspect of this being, I guess, so in the Christian worldview, the one that resurrects us is like Christ. If we are in the, integrated into Christ's body, then we will be resurrected with him, and he sort of takes us. So if you think of, well, my imaginary friend is resurrected and revived, and, and my other, oh, like the same thing with my story characters. There's some, some characters that have just, come back in very much different different forms. Um, anyway, so like my imaginary friend or my story characters, they're a part of me, they're in me and consisting in me. And because I remember them, their lives are sustained. And because I remember them, they're resurrected in, in, um, in a sense. So I guess from the perspective of the church as the body of Christ, because we are in the mind, in the body of Christ, Christ, we can trust to sort of remember us. Um, or if you consider just any kind of like universal mind, if, if we are embraced in such a benevolent universal mind, then it would would remember us just as I will inevitably remember all of my creations. But what changes? What has to be left behind? What has to die and what gets taken along? Mm. is an interesting thing to ponder or just to notice. And I guess, and this gets into the territory of like purgatory slash hell slash the afterlife or like losing your identity or how much of one's identity gets taken along. And I think we can see that same process playing out this is really off the topic the main topic of the video but like um see the same process like playing out even in life with the transformations that we undergo like the parts of my identity that were not um good for me and that were limiting and killing limitations as we talked about elsewhere those parts 
got sort of dropped or and it's not really dropped because they weren't really positive things but like they're changed the contours are changed um or i guess like i don't know something like i used to be consider myself like a baptist and i would no longer it is part of me but i wouldn't like define myself in that way um it's more like growing past, I don't know. Yeah. But I guess, okay. So if you have, if the points of your identity are, like healthy and things that are producing life and that are really a genuine part of you and that are living and can be carried on, then those will be carried on and remembered. But if they're, if most of those things are like twisted and corrupting and limiting and like unhealthy, then they have to be purged. And that could feel more like a death or like a loss of identity or like hell or purgatory. Um, until those things are changed, until they can be permanent or eternal. Again, not in a static sense, but in a sense of continuing life because somebody was saying something about like well what about like Hitler so much of his identity that we know of at least is the atrocities that he committed which obviously would be something that wouldn't like almost all of the contours of his earthly life would have to be destroyed or altered or really like, repented of and really transformed almost in recognition in order to be able to well he could no longer be like the dictator who like kills you know you know so like that that would be that was his earthly identity was like the fuhrer or the dictator however but that could not be an identity that could continue forever it would have to be changed a lot um and be essentially killed and quite a lot like worked quite down to the ground in order to be made into anything that could be remembered and resurrected and like So I guess that's more about death than resurrection, but there's the interplay. But yeah, remember.